It's devious. It's devious. Oh, do you fight this? Zevious is a 1982 arcade game published by Namco and uh, brought into the USA and Europe by Atari. Runs on the same hardware as Gallagher, and you will see, well, th it, that will become pretty clear. It's a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. You've seen this kind of thing before, mainly because they're, all the other games were actually copying Zevious. The game takes place over a single level, but that level repeats, I think, 16 times. And yeah, you can see the connection to Gallagher here, can't you? One notable thing about the game, there are, I think, 16 restart points on the level. And if you're three quarters of the way through one of those stages, you will just, and, and you're killed, you will jump forward to the next stage. But there's no markings on screen to indicate where those restart points are. Ah. Released on the home systems by US Gold and quickly put out on the Americana label, which was Mastertronic re-releasing US Gold games. And we start off on my Spectrum 48K+, Plus because people seem to like seeing this, so uh, I'm trying to include it as much as possible. Re-release came very quickly, under a year from what I can see, and there's a countdown timer on the loading screen on the Spectrum. Very nice feature. Why didn't more games have this. Conversion is by Probe. We know this because it says Probe on the screen. There is a plot to the game. There's a technologically, technology advanced civilization was forced to evacuate the Earth prior to the Ice Age. Now these people are back. So it's all done on one fire button on the spectrum and I can tell you now, play this on the keyboard. It just, for some reason, the joystick seems particularly difficult on the Spectrum version. You hold down, well, the fire button releases the bombs and the bullets at the same time. Amstrad version. Pro boys like to do those big chunky graphics on the CPC, so let's see what you've got going on here. The game indicates there's two player mode, but it's one player after the other. It's not a co-op mode. Off we go on the CPC in this rather small screen, presumably designed to keep the scrolling speed up, the CPC having 16K screens. Therefore, that's quite a lot of memory for the Z80 to shift around. So they've uh, put it into this smaller window, presumably to keep it moving at a nice speed. It's very colourful. Stippling effect on the ground there to simulate a third green colour. Not quite sure why they've done that. Unless they want it to look like grass from very far away. The trick is with the ground installations, if it, where they're next to each other, is if you drop your bomb right in the middle, then you'll blow up two at once. C64 version. Game costs 9 99 on 64 on cassette, 14 99 on disc. Still using one fire button on the 64, and you do get this, the target thing from the arcade to show you where your bombs are going to drop. Zap didn't really like this. 21% criticisms that it's slow and it's, the game seems reluctant to do anything exciting even when provoked. It's enough to put you to sleep. It does seem rather pedestrian and remembering Light Force came out oh, about the same time as this. There's an ST conversion, no Amiga conversion and immediately it looks very similar to the arcade. Unfortunately, uh, while a static screen may look very similar to the arcade, that's where the similarity ends. It's very difficult to see the enemy bullets and bombs heading towards you against the background. They always seem to shimmer. Your craft is just too slow. The enemy bullets can actually outpace you, which, when it gets busy, makes it that, combined with the fact you can't really see them. It just, it just makes the game very, very hard. The music tries to replicate the arcade, but manages to be, well, I say music, it's just kind of background noise. It's just not right. They've got all the ingredients here, but it just doesn't play 
like the arcade does. Back over to the Spectrum, and we're on my plus two now. There is only a 48k version. They're some of the worst baddies in the game. They just appear from nowhere and then shoot at you. No, no warning. And here's the end of level baddie. What you need to do with this, if you can, is drop a bomb right in that hole in the middle. That can be easier said than done. If you hang around long enough, the baddie will just disappear and you'll be on to level two. Although the game won't tell you it's level two. Um, yeah, you just kind of continue on. And then you'll notice what's happened is everything has looped round. And you're going through the same landscape again, but with more enemies. So it stops there. It says player one. But it doesn't say it's stage two anywhere. But it's just going to loop round exactly the same again, except with more baddies. So we're on to stage two on the spectrum. I, I said it loops round. I think on the spectrum there might actually be some variation. But... Essentially, Xevious is the same thing over and over again, just getting harder. I have got the collision detection off now on the Amstrad version, and the game suddenly slowed down massively, and a massive sprite has appeared, which is the end of level baddie. Which I'm trying to drop a bomb into the... Yeah, there you go, I've killed that, but why has it got all that blocky blockiness around the edge there? The problem with Xevious is that aside from that end of level baddie on these 8-bit versions and the ST as well, you've kind of... You see it all in the first couple of minutes and then that's it. It's not like Light Force where there's a bit of variation. You do get these things heading towards you, which are these kind of rotating squares that look quite impressive for the era. The designs in the arcade were trying to go for depth and a 3D look on some of the sprites. Uh, the enemy spaceships are based on popular movie and TV series spaceships. And the end of level baddie on C64 is very blocky. I'm suddenly reminded that we looked at Terra Cognita by Codemasters, the 199 game, the other week. It's a vertically scrolling shoot 'em up. It's not much good. But it was 199, and it came out before this, before Xevious. So you think there was some kind of standard to live up to with your conversion? As Zap64 point out, 10 quid is a lot to pay for such a slow and monotonous shoot 'em up. Yeah, when you can have Terra Cognita for just two. At least it's not slow as well. This is full price, but very quickly out on budget. It's an old arcade game, we're on the ST now, that's been converted to the home format. And there's nothing you can do to disguise the fact this is a very old arcade game. I say very old, four years old by this stage. Um, four and a half years old. But, at this time in home computing, things were moving so much faster than, than now. A game from four and a half years ago now will feel like a game from today, pretty much. In, in early 1987, a game from four and a half years ago was ancient history, and we've got a game that's basically Gallagher, but more, more advanced, because it's running on that hardware. The ST version is just ludicrously hard. It is ludicrously hard. I can't get to the end of level one, even with infinite lives. You just get kicked back to the restart points, I'm sure on the ST the restart points aren't working out properly either because you seem to get kicked right back rather than if you're three quarters of the way through a stage just being pushed forward as the arcade does. But these bullets are just so... You know, when they're coming out of the trees, which they can do, uh, and they're coming from behind you, it's, it's really hard to see them on the ST. Crash were kinder to the Spectrum version. They gave it 64%. But they did say, having heard bits about the arcade game, they expected a bit more th from the Spectrum version than they actually got. It's just another shoot 'em up And the Spectrum version, I think this is level 4 now. It gets a lot harder, but it is the same level over and over again. 
I think level one lacks this blue section, but from then on, it just loops the same over and over and over. And you just get more bases on the ground, more enemies. They're more aggressive. They move faster and they do things like that where they explode and just send bullets everywhere. Back on the 64 and it's just Groundhog Day. It's got that Namco feel from the sound effects on the 64 that the ST is trying to do and doesn't seem to quite get right. It's very, very pedestrian. It's, it feels very slow for a 64 shoot 'em up. See, this was a very significant game. It influenced so many shoot 'em ups that came after it. The problem is, by the time this game came out, it was ancient history. It was an old game, and it's showing its age. At the same time, Light Force was out at full price. Terra Cresta was out at full price, and you can see why US Gold rushed this out onto budget pretty quick. It's incredibly mediocre on all these systems. Boring sums up all of these versions. The ST version is exceptionally hard and no attention to detail has been given to how those bullets look when they're coming towards you. You just keep on being surprised that you've been shot because you haven't seen what's coming towards you. The Spectrum version looks elderly and is just bland and boring. 64 version is slow, bland and boring. The Amstrad version feels like something Amsoft would have put out when they were churning out, well, games like this to be honest. Overall, the home ports of Xevious are rather turgid, and no, there isn't an MSX version, surprisingly. US Gold put this out at full price against Light Force, Terra Cresta, and also Terra Cognita on budget. And frankly, which of these are you going to choose to play? It's not going to be Xevious, is it?